Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to our webcast on uh, Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform, uh, Prophecy MDM, and how the two things fit together. Um, on our call today, we have um, Eric Melcher, Chief Technology Officer of Prophecy, who's going to show us what some of this stuff looks like live. And uh, hopefully in a moment or two, we'll have uh, Srikanth Venkat, uh, who's uh, from Microsoft in the uh, development, the Purview development team, who uh, will talk a little bit about uh, Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform. Uh, and what Microsoft is doing with that, where Purview fits into that, and that will set the context for where uh, master data management also fits. So let me uh, share my screen and we can get started. One second. Okay, should be there. All right, so um, uh, we're going to be talking about, uh, as I said, master data management for the intelligent data platform. Um, with uh, myself, uh, Eric, and uh, Srikanf, and uh, we will go through, uh, a, a, I'll go through a very high-level uh, initial discussion of, of uh, uh, who is prophecy and why is MDM important, then we'll kind of uh, backtrack and put it all in the context of uh, the intelligent data platform, and uh, then we'll walk through a reference architecture of how these things uh, are integrated together, how prophecy master data management fits into uh, the uh, Microsoft's vision for the intelligent data platform and how it helps flesh it out by providing uh, certified trustworthy data that can be used by anyone um, as they are uh, um, uh, building up uh, enterprise analytics, uh, the, the uh, operational foundation for digital transformation, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you can feel free to ask questions as we uh, go through this. Uh, you can uh, enter uh, stuff in the chat, which is visible to everybody, or uh, in Q&A, and we'll do our best to answer any questions as we go through. Um, we should have time for Q&A at the end, so that we should be able to sweep up any uh, um, anything that is uh, uh, anything that comes up that we can't get uh, um, that we don't answer as we as we go through. And if we miss those questions uh, during our, our live time today, we will follow up. Uh, this is being recorded and you will be able to access it afterwards uh, of the, the um, of our website okay so let me uh, um, get started uh, i have one slide only on prophecy only just so that you know who we are if you're you're not familiar with us i think it's important you know who you're listening to uh, but this is a joint presentation of microsoft and prophecy <laughs> just less need to imp uh, introduce microsoft uh, uh, as a vendor so Prophecy is a leading master data management vendor. Master data, man man master data management is our focus. We'll be talking more about that as we get into it. Uh, we're one of the fastest growing MDM vendors in the market, and we have a best-in-class multi-domain MDM platform. One of the things that I think is very important as you're thinking about how to um, implement uh, particularly something as broad and encompassing as the Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform is that you shouldn't be limiting yourself to only one or two domains. You should be able to handle as many domains as, as you have in your business. Um, we'll talk a little bit of it in, in a bit about what domains are, but they're really the kind of the, the, the pillars of your business, you know, your customers, your products, your assets, your locations, things like that. Things that don't change very much are entered in lots of different systems, uh, but often when you bring the data from those different systems together, it doesn't match up. So um, being able to handle all of the domains that you require to deliver on a, uh, a value proposition or use case uh, is tremendously important, not just st sticking with one like customer or product or whatever, handling them all together is what delivers the real return on investment. Um, we are generally uh, liked by our customers, which is a good thing. It's something that we spend a lot of effort on trying to make uh, true. Uh, if you go to the Gartner Peer Insight site, you'll find of the MDM, the major MDM vendors, we have the highest uh, customer recommendation rate, which is uh, great. And we're uh, for the purpose of this conversation, I think it's really important to know that we are a uh, Microsoft Gold partner. We have uh, a long-standing relationship with uh, Microsoft. Um, we have now delivered our software as uh, a packaged Kubernetes service. Our, Eric will talk a little bit more about this uh, uh, later on, but you can implement platform as a service and you implement in your own tenant. A lot of our customers choose that to be Azure, although it's not limited to that. Um, uh, or software as a service where we run it for you in our tenant. We can have you up and running in a few minutes and uh, take some of the, uh, the, you know, the background burden off of you in terms of uh, system maintenance and such. Um, we're a Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform launch partner, which uh, um, uh, Srikanth will talk a little bit about uh, when we get to that, that spot, but it's important to know it's part of our Microsoft relationship that we are we are deeply invested in uh, being part of that uh, that ecosystem, and we have native integration with 
with a lot of different parts of uh, the Microsoft environment, particularly uh, Azure components like uh, Purview, uh, Azure Data Factory, Power BI, uh, Synapse, etc. And again, you're going to see that with uh, uh, the architecture walkthrough in just a second. Gartner uh, points out in their most recent uh, magic quadrant for MDM, prophecy strategies to make MDM easier to understand and deploy. It's close alignment with Microsoft Azure Data Services makes Prophecy Platform a compelling option for uh, Azure clients. So uh, I think you're going to see a lot of that kind of illustrated today. You'll see some uh, um, software and you'll see how it is relatively easy to understand MDM and how uh, through the integration we have into the uh, Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform and other uh, Azure components uh, that it makes it a, a compelling option. And uh, as I said, We've had a, a lot of uh, history with Microsoft. We continue to have a lot of history with, with Microsoft. This gentleman, Mike Flasco, has been a sponsor uh, for a, a long time. He um, uh, owns the Purview product set um, and uh, is increasingly, um, that's, that's being built out as a universal data governance platform. And he, amongst many other people, uh, recognized that MDM is an important aspect of a unified approach to data governance and having deeply integrated solutions uh, such as Prophecy is a tremendous benefit for Azure customers, which uh, I think you will see. So that's all we're going to talk about with regard to, to Prophecy per se. The rest is all going to be just around the value prop and what it is we do and why that's uh, important. So let's just start off really quickly. Why MDM in the first place? Um, Gartner points out again in their most recent uh, Magic Quadrant that MDM initiatives have continued to progress as a foundational component of digital transformation programs. So most organizations have lots of data um, and they want to be able to leverage their data to drive their business. Uh, but like everything else in, in IT and uh, the data world, it is still uh, unfortunately a garbage in garbage out proposition. So um, as many tools as you may have to visualize and to use AI and all of these kind of uh, tremendously smart things, if you have uh, poor quality, untrustworthy data as an input, uh, you're not going to get very far. So we're here to solve some of those problems and allow people to move forward. So uh, at a high level, if you're trying to drive digital transformation, whether you're thinking of it in terms of uh, improved business insights or operational efficiencies, it, you want and expect high quality trusted data that's complete and consistent and accurate and ready to use, which seems like kind of a no-brainer. Why would you not want that? It's, it's, it's obvious, right? What is less obvious is that uh, that's not where most organizations start. Uh, they generally have data from many siloed sources, whether they're multiple ERP systems or CRM systems or legacy systems or external data feeds. Um, the data is coming from lots of different places and it needs to be joined together to be used. Um, but when it comes from all these different disjointed sources, it's duplicated and ungoverned. I may have same customer information uh, in multiple different systems, but it's slightly different in each one. So when I bring it all together, it looks like three customers instead of one customer. And that's just the source of tremendous frustration and inaccuracy and potentially misleading conclusions. So all of that is pretty um, um, obvious and to be expected if you create this data without the benefit of unified uh, universal data governance, that's just what you're going to get. And, uh, and we should all expect that. So paradoxically, the data that you're trying to use uh, is preventing you from creating the data that you need to use uh, to, to drive your business. So if you think about it that with the data, it kind of becomes a brick wall uh, that we need to overcome somehow. And that's what we do with uh, um, with these products that we're going to show today. Uh, we're going to show how Purview and uh, uh, Prophecy uh, Master Data Management work together at the core of the Intelligent Data Platform, the Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform, to overcome these data silos and deliver something that is uh, usable data that you can use to drive your business. Um, at the very high level, Purview uh, scans and classifies data and creates a data catalog, and that's a tremendous first start. It can then start to uh, help define some of the data standards, allocate the data, uh, the governance stewards, the governance, you know, the owners of the data, the access policies, as well as some of the governance and data quality policies. Those can then be made, but by itself, it's not going to be changing the data. It's not going to be uh, merging multiple customer records into one trusted golden customer record, that kind of thing. That is the job of, of uh, an MDM such as Prophecy. We're there to enforce the data standards uh, that might be set by, uh, by Purview. We'll match and merge uh, information, master data information from all these multiple sources, um, and then validate that it's meeting all of our requirements in terms of quality and governance standards. And where it doesn't 
will uh, remediate it or we have a, a, a workspace where data stewards can come in and remediate that data and make sure that it is uh, worthy. And then when we, uh, uh, we, we can notify it back into purview that it, this information is now certified so that someone seeking to find high quality data to use to drive whatever it is in their business uh, has certified data to, um, uh, to use. Okay, so that's kind of the, the, the high level of how all this uh, uh, comes together. Let me hand over now to Srikanth. And Srikanth, you might want to just uh, introduce yourself for 30 seconds and then uh, uh, take us through the uh, Intelligent Data Platform uh, overview. Uh, you're on mute, I think, Srikanth. Thanks, Martin. Hopefully folks can hear me now. Um, my name is Srikanth Venkat. I'm part of the uh, Microsoft Purview product team. And uh, within the Purview product team, uh, my team looks at a number of things like customer engagements, as well as ISP and partner ecosystem, strategic roadmap, et cetera. So you're super excited here to partner with uh, Prophecy. We have been partners for uh, probably the uh, longest when it comes to Purview, like over two years now. And um, as uh, some of you might be aware, we made an announcement back in build in May. Um, around the Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform. Uh, think of this as a way to unify all of your data management capabilities um, and then to provide this comprehensive pane of um, governance as well as other aspects of data management uh, within one platform. So we take our existing um, services uh, in terms of Microsoft's, uh, for example, uh, SQL Server, Azure SQL, Cosmos DB, et cetera, along with the data governance uh, fabric that we're building with Purview, and then announce uh, that all of these will uh, provide you the ability to do this holistic data management, um, unifying the analytics databases and data governance uh, sort of pillars that we have. And this is what we announced back in build in, in uh, May, and then back uh, in the uh, last Ignite in October, uh, if you can move to the next slide, Martin. Uh, we announced the um, MIDP, the Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform ecosystem, uh, which has uh, a number of partners that we've identified here. So, and in particular, what we see prominently featured here is in the MDM space. Uh, Propsy has been our, uh, you know, uh, longest, uh, you know, that we've been working with, and probably has the most one of the most mature of the integrations that we have with uh, the governance stack within uh, within the MIDP platform. Um, so the idea here is that we want to have uh, this ecosystem of complementary partner solutions that have been curated and which complement a lot of the MIDP service capabilities, and they uh, unblock or accelerate the growth for our customers in terms of their management of the data estates. Um, and then we've handpicked these partners based on the proven customer adoption and joint use cases that we have, and also in terms of mind share. Um, and as, as uh, you already mentioned we, we picked those partners where we have these durable partnerships uh, so they're willing to invest with us in gtm and maturity models and then have that end-to-end -end integration across uh, the mitp stack in terms of the customer experience whether it's like you know all the way from the discovery of the services to acquisition to use in commerce and all of those systems so that's uh roughly what we've uh, looked at in in terms of this uh, picture and then prophecy is one of our launch partners of this isv ecosystem um, so moving forward, um, you know, what, what uh, just to kind of give you a little bit of a background on Purview for those who might not be familiar, um, across industries and organizations, we see that our customers are, you know, leveraging and um, recognizing this transformative power of data uh, and its ability to, you know, propel new business outcomes. Uh, but the data needs to be discoverable easily and then understandable and needs to have high quality governed, protected, et cetera, with the uh, property, you know, corporate or other standards, regulatory standards that it's subject to. So we're seeing this whole confluence of, you know, more data, which is a more complex data landscape, you know, growing in variety, volume, et cetera, the more systems and more silos across these in terms of operations. And then there are more environments. So the data, data states are now getting like, you know, spanning all the way from edge to multi-cloud, multi on-prem, SaaS, all of these environments. And there's quite a few regulations that are coming that are, you know, you know, throwing this, uh, you know, in, under the lens of, uh, you know, proper scrutiny and management. 
Um, and then there's also more democratization of the data happening around this. So how do we sort of you know provide these right guardrails around uh, all of this data and its use in the enterprise while providing the uh, right business cases for it? And that's that's where our data governance pillar within MIDP focused on Microsoft Purview comes in. This is where we want to build this cloud native hyperscale hybrid cloud aware experience um, through an extensible platform where you catalog things once, for example, and then uh, you're able to provide all of these capabilities that I mentioned below here around self-service data discovery, as well as insights and, and various workflows for the other person, as such as your chief data officer, chief privacy officer, and security and compliance. Of the house. We can go to the next slide. Yeah, so this is uh, sort of an eye chart, but I wanted to kind of very quickly talk through what uh, the Purview uh, platform is. So uh, think of uh, Purview as a platform and a set of applications sitting on top of it that leverage the, the information in the platform. Uh, the platform component is what we call the data map. Think of that as a giant collected uh, non knowledge graph where your assets in the enterprise are the uh, nodes on the graph. And then the relationships, uh, these could be structural or functional relationships. These could be things like lineage, these could be things like classifications or additional business context that's used to decorate that edge, uh, uh, decorate that uh, vertex. Uh, those form the, um, the connected graph or knowledge graph that we use power the platform. Um, all of our API surface here is uh, governed by Apache Atlas. We are 100% compatible with that. Um, and then anything that you would be able to do in terms of type extensions um, or other ability to you know, programmatically add lineage or other aspects of these relationships is all exposed completely. That is our API surface uh, in terms of uh, purview. And then the uh, all of this hydrates what we call the data map. And then the data map, think of that as a foundational component that powers Purview. Uh, as you can imagine, there's like a lot of different sources that um, customers might have. Uh, there's a lot of complexity with this data state. So we have built automated scanning and classification capabilities um, uh, to power the data map, to be able to populate this data map or hydrate this data map once across the enterprise so that all of the uh, you know, applications sitting on top, whether they are uh, you know, Microsoft's own first party applications or third party uh, or partner applications such as Prophecy can leverage the same data map once uh, to do, uh, you know, to offer different workflows for different personas within the enterprise. So at the bottom you see here, like we cover, uh, you know, hybrid and multi-cloud sources. You know, whether it's your traditional database and operational or analytical environments on-prem or in the cloud, files, object stores, and data lakes, various business apps, as well as multi-cloud. So we do cover uh, several services in AWS and GCP, in addition to a lot of our first-party services uh, in in Azure. Then we also cover third parties such as uh, Snowflake and a lot of the on-prem systems, you know, including everything from DB2 to Oracle, Teradata, SQL Server, et cetera. So these scanners go and take uh, all of the metadata information that you have, populate that into the data map and make it available for all of the applications that sit on top. So uh, the platform alone is, is not enough for use of that data. So you need to have uh, workflows and experiences that kind of speak to that. And that's where these apps uh, come in. So there are, we have various apps focused on different personas. So moving from left to right, we have a data catalog, which makes sense uh, to have on top of this data map kind of platform where people can find assets, understand their context, and be able to use things. And then, for, uh, for example, to be able to classify assets, to be understand the lineage and trustworthiness of the data. Um, all of those are within the data catalog app. Um, the data map, the scanning capabilities, and the data catalog um, have already been GA for almost a Year now, a little more than a year. Uh, we have various other apps that uh, we are, that are in various stages of preview. Uh, moving from left to right is data sharing, where you could have snapshot or um, you know, in place sharing. Um, and in in this particular case in preview, we already have a public preview of the uh, in place sharing across ADLS, as an example. Uh, in private preview, we have a data quality application which is focused on assessments, uh, and then uh, down the line, we will add other capabilities around data cleansing uh, and remediation. Uh, we also have a data in estate insights app, which went uh, GA, I think, back in July. This is around how do you get a bird's eye view and drill down into different parts of your data estates. Uh, we have a data policy app that's based on a policy engine that came from our Blue Talent acquisition that's capable of handling all kinds of data access governance policies, everything from your data access controls, uh, you know, 
both attribute-based access control as well as resource-based access control and other policies such as lifecycle are all possible to be powered through that policy engine that has been in uh, public preview in terms of the data access control capabilities. And uh, about a couple of weeks ago, we announced the general availability of one portion of it uh, for the uh, uh, SQL DevOps policies that were announced as part of uh, SQL Server 2022. Uh, we also have a data privacy uh, privacy ops kind of application that we're building that would do everything from privacy assessments uh, to other operations and management uh, in, in these different areas. So everything from your data subject access request, et cetera. Uh, you know, we are planning to build some capabilities on that to you know, expose these as apps uh, sitting on top of the same data map platform. So the idea behind this is that the data map powers all of the other apps on top, including not only our apps, but also third-party apps. And one area where uh, you know, Purview has uh, completely delegated to the um, partner ecosystem is the master data management area. And you know, Prophecy, as uh, we mentioned before, is one of our uh, you know, oldest and probably more mature partners in, in this regard, uh, which are, you know, offers the MDM, RDM, and record management sort of capability. We can go to the next slide. Just wanted to kind of you know uh, talk through a little bit before uh, Eric dives in. Um, all of our ISV and partner integrations focus on the ability of uh, third-party apps to run on top of the same platform. So it's very it becomes very important to understand this data platform and what it means. And uh, we want to kind of give a little bit more context on this. Uh, so the data map, think of that as the knowledge graph. And then it connects those data assets, and then you can add various types of metadata, whether it's like you know, business, health, semantic, compliance, etc. And because of our origins with the Apache Atlas uh, sort of infrastructure and APIs, it's an open platform, so you can actually add your own uh, models. Uh, recently, we introduced a concept of uh, what we call uh, meta models, which will help you model your domains and systems and processes, for example, and then you can customize that to your existing um, environments and your existing business processes. Um, and then the fact that we have these scanners working to enrich that platform means that we always can do the discovery and stewardship uh, near real time and keep that up to date. And various types of assets and you know relationships we already have Presented so these could be like your files, tables, columns, etc. Uh, we have some uh, elements of location that we are working on uh, that will be added in terms of the metadata, semantic and business metadata already is available through things like business terms, data domains, business processes, etc. Uh, through this meta model uh, construct that is uh, just entered public preview a couple of weeks ago. Um, we are working on health, entitlement, and other uh, types of metadata that you can add on top or enrich with the data map. Uh, and then uh, above all, we have the third party apps that integrate at this layer so that they can also seamlessly use all of the data that you can hydrate once across all of this data. And I think Eric will uh, go through in his demo how we kind of take all of this, uh, you know, whether these are on prem or cloud or hybrid sort of you know, scenarios, and whether it's operational analytic or, you know, other data lake kind of environments, how do we capture all of this, uh, you know, data map uh, items and then as you go through your pipelining and mdm and mastering processes how does purview interact with uh, you know the purview platform interact with the third-party apps such as uh, uh, prophecy sitting on top to leverage that value so i'll hand it over to, to you eric thank you All right eric just just as eric is uh, grabbing control of the, the screen and sharing his uh, uh slides uh, i'll point out to you that um in the docs tab on your uh, the webcast software there are some things you can click on to uh, get a, a further demo or uh, understand more about how we work with the intelligent data platform. I don't want you to do that while Eric's talking, <laughs> but I want to make you aware that those things are there for you. And I see that uh, there's some stuff uh, um, uh, in the Q&A tab. Um, I'll start working on that while Eric is talking and we'll do our best to answer your questions. So feel free to drop in more questions. And with that, Eric, over to you. Yeah, I think you may need to stop sharing, Martin, for me in order for me to take over. Um, there you go. Sorry about that. And I want to share the screen. There we go. All right. Can you confirm you're seeing my screen, Martin? Yes. Okay, great. So what we're going to walk through, uh, you know, sure can't share a little bit about the Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform, the ecosystem and, and processes involvement. So what we're going to do is actually walk through a reference architecture that shows you know, how all these pieces can fit together and how, how uh, the integrations that we've uh, developed jointly with Microsoft 
help enable this broader architecture. So um, this actually will help answer one of the questions I saw in the chat, which is kind of where do you start first? Is it it's kind of metadata or data governance first versus MDM first? Um, at the end of the day, one thing Purview uh, can really help you with is understanding what data you have and, and where it exists. And that's obviously a key input uh, to MDM. So um, with Purview, it makes it easy for you to scan your broader data state, um, identify, scan, and classify um, all of your existing data assets, and then, and then load all that into Purview's data map, and then access that through uh, the Purview data catalog. Um, and then, you know, where, where Prophecy and MDM plugs in, it's in the ability to, uh, once you've discovered all the data you have, to then start putting uh, uh, different domains of data under management. So typically master data management solutions are focused on master data domains. So customers, products, locations, reference data. I saw someone mention of the Q&A provider data if you're in the healthcare space, if you're manufacturing and by the you know, materials. Um, but that's typically the data um, that organizations are putting under management. And most of the time, if you're with MDM, what you're really trying to do is solve an underlying business problem, right? We want to improve our ability to cross sell, upsell. In order to do that, you need to understand who your customers are and what products you can sell uh, into those customers. So uh, as a result of that, most of our customers quickly uh, uh, implement Prophecy and actually have multiple uh, domains under management. So as you, as you model your master data in Prophecy um, and start to put it under management, um, you know, this is where our, our first integration within the intelligent data platform ecosystem comes into play, which is Prophecy's integration with Purview. Um, so in order to enable this, all you need to do is, is, is register with Prophecy the Purview account you wish to use. And at that point, everything is fully automated. So um, the first step of that is that the, uh, the assets that are created within Prophecy are automatically published into the Purview data map. That allows all of your Prophecy uh, assets to natively participate in governance inside of Purview alongside the rest of your data state. And then as governance occurs uh, within Purview, um, you can then, uh, that, that information is then consumed back and displayed within Prophecy back to your data steward. So for example, if you classify some data or, or associate some glossary, glossary terms with a, a master data entity within Prophecy, um, that information is natively available um, back to data stewards as they steward data within Prophecy. So to show you a, a little bit about how that actually uh, looks like uh, from a product perspective, um, you know, starting here within Purview, let's say um, I'm, I'm a user within my organization. I'm looking for some customer data. And going into Purview, we can, we can use the catalog to, to quickly search the data map. And here we can see a number of different uh, Prophecy assets that were automatically uh, published to Purview from Prophecy. Uh, if we click on this customer asset, we can see uh, the description that's been captured. We can see um, you know, the various technical bits of metadata that were published here um, by Prophecy. And um, we can see the underlying schema of, of what a customer looks like in Prophecy and all the various classifications associated with that. We can see contacts that have been defined as experts and owners of this particular asset. And then we can also see a, a lineage. Um, and, and in this case, what this lineage is showing is actually the, the matching and golden record management process within Prophecy, uh, the mechanisms through which uh, Prophecy's ML-based uh, clustering engine is creating golden records, and then ultimately how those golden records are populated um, with, with source data through a promotion process. And in this scenario, uh, we're looking for uh, you know, some golden records. And so maybe we, uh, in this case, we can click on this golden record data set called Customer Masters. We can see that, yes, this is in fact, you know, perhaps the data set that I'm looking to use within my enterprise. I can actually click a link here uh, from Purview and navigate um, to that asset within Prophecy. So um, this is this is the, the the integration we've delivered between Purview and Prophecy, and then um, from there we can get into the the mainline data management capabilities of the Prophecy platform. So you know the ability to um, identify and capture and, and correct data quality issues, the ability for us to identify um, like records, group them together, and create golden records, the ability to manage uh, you know hierarchies and relationships within our data and all through a broad uh, data stewardship uh, user experience. So just to, 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 to show some of those capabilities that are inherent to MDM and how MDM actually helps you begin to improve your data, uh, we can go in here into the Prophecy platform. In this case, I'm going to open up my Fast app that's been designed for managing customer data. And in this case, I can go ahead and, and I, I know there's a particular uh, account that I'm looking for, which is full sports supply. And here we can go ahead and open up uh, this particular match group 
But we can see that uh, Proxy through our ML-based matching engine has identified four uh, existing source records um, that really all look like fundamentally the same business. This is where Proxy has then uh, created a golden record. If we want to understand the mechanics of how these source records have been matched together, uh, we can open up a match group visualizer. And here we can see that the, you know, the various records, who matched to whom, um, we can drill into the details of some of these scores. I, just, I don't have my model uh, stood up. Um, and then from there, we can make a decision about, yes, this looks like a good match. I'm going to go ahead and approve, approve it. So this is all about making sure that we have the right group formed. And then from there, we, we can go into um, the ability to then uh, uh, populate uh, the golden record with the best available information from our source records. So here we can see um, which records we, we grab various values from. Um, and we can also have the ability to manually override um, some of these if we decide that, you know, one of these other uh, values is, in fact, a better um, assignment uh, or promotion up to uh, the golden record. So that's one of the, the, the core capabilities of the MDM platform. Um, but Prophecy also has the ability to manage multiple different domains. So let me go ahead and switch to a different application here focused on product data. And here we can see some of the other capabilities um, that are available from an MDM perspective. So I'm going to go ahead and filter down to um, a few different records. So from a data quality perspective, we can see here that we have three touring bike records that have some sort of data quality issue. I can click on that and I can see here that my uh, the rule that has been violated here is that my MSRP must be 50% greater than my standard cost. And in this case, I can see that the MSRP for these three records looks to be you know kind of uh, miskeyed compared to some of the other records nearby. And this is something where not only can we identify data quality issues, but we can actually correct those issues um, within Prophecy and ultimately push that corrected value um, back into upstream operational application. And so in this case, go in here and rekey the correct value, click save, and Prophecy will automatically reevaluate those records for data quality. Um, in this case, marking them as, as corrected. And that's something that could then be pushed um, either back into operational applications or certainly uh, consume downstream in, in your analytics environment. Um, we can click around here. We can also uh, manage different facets of relationships. So Prophecy has the, uh, a mechanism to allow you to visualize and manage relationships in your data. We also have the ability to uh, manage hierarchies within your data. So if we go into our, 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 uh, our, our hierarchy here, um, we're navigating through a product hierarchy. In this case, I'm, I'm down looking at mountain frames. I see two records here that, that don't look like they're um, they're in the correct spot and go ahead and move these. I can find the, the correct uh, product category for these to be uh, moved under and go ahead and complete that move. And now I can go find those two products now inside of the correct. So if I was in Power BI and I saw as I was drilling down my hierarchy, I saw a data quality issue, something that was not on the right spot, or we've recategorized these products, Proxy makes it very easy for you to um, correct those issues and then obviously and ultimately improve um, the quality of the data in your analytics environment. So that's just a very quick walk through some of the core capabilities of MDM and how it can help um, make your data better. Of course, the next question is how do we actually um, get this data from our operational applications into MDM? And this is where another uh, effort that we've, we've been working on jointly with Microsoft around Azure Data Factory uh, makes that easy. So um, this began with uh, Prophecy originally working with the Azure Data Factory team. This is going back now a couple of years ago, um, the ADF team was working on um, their new connectors around uh, rest bait, RESTful services. And so working with the Azure Data Factory team, um, we made sure that Prophecy's own REST-based uh, APIs um, were, were compatible with uh, how Azure Data Factory needed a REST API to work in order to easily stream data in and out of Prophecy via REST. And then the Azure Data Factory actually made some changes and enhancements to their REST capabilities in order to make the user experience for doing so um, simple and easy. And, and that's manifested itself into uh, Proxy creating um, some ADF templates. And those templates have just been recently published into the global uh, template gallery. So if you go um, into Azure Data Factory and you want to create a new pipeline from, temp uh, from a template, you can go in here and actually uh, see that Proxy is one of the uh, template providers. And here you get the ability to easily select a template, click continue, um, configure your source and destination link services. And at that point, you're, you're easily able to um, pick data up from various places in your enterprise and write it into Prophecy or vice versa. So now that we've, we've uh, governed our data, we've, we've put some data under management, made it better, uh, obviously uh, performed some levels of integration, 
Now, what do we do with it? So in addition to pushing that, beta, that data, that better data back to our operational applications, we also uh, oftentimes, virtually all of our customers want to push it downstream into their analytics environment. So um, in, in many cases, that means um, taking the transactional data out of your operational applications and bring it into an, a data warehousing platform such as Azure Synapse Analytics, and then connecting back together with the improved master data um, that's been generated from within Prophecy, and then making that available to your broader business community um, to, to use to, to drive better decision making. In addition to that, there's also a number of scenarios where customers will be um, in tools such as Power BI looking to perform more uh, ad hoc type analysis. And, and this is where another integration that we've, we've worked on with Microsoft, which is a Power BI connector for Prophecy. And so uh, the, the scenario here is, um, you know, I'm a Power BI user and I, I'm putting, I've got some data that I've received. I'm looking to do an ad hoc analysis. I've got some sales data that's got maybe some customer product kind of SKUs or customer IDs in it. But what I need is a richer set of product or customer data to actually complete my analysis. And, uh, and in order to make that easy, our Power BI connector allows users to easily open up Power BI, um, natively connect to Prophecy um, using that Power BI connector. You can see that connector um, is here. So this connector has been certified by Microsoft and is, auto, is now uh, published out to um, any Power BI user uh, globally. And so selecting that Prophecy Power BI connector um, all you need is the URL of your Prophecy instance, and uh, you connect, select the, the data that you actually want to um, import into your Power BI model. And at that point, you can then connect it up with the other uh, information you're building out in your analysis. Now you can start to leverage that to improve your insights. So for example, uh, we were looking at full sports supply in, in Prophecy previously, and we saw that there are four different versions of full sports supply. Now, by, in it, by importing our, our source and our golden customer record data from Prophecy into Power BI, and now able to, to understand not just you know, how much revenue have I generated from these various different permutations of full sports supply, but what is my actual total relationship with that real business entity out there in the world across my different applications and across those, those different duplicate records. So now if you think about, you know, from an end user's perspective, what is the experience here? Um, what, this, what this allows you to do is, is for your typical data analyst, they can almost ignore all the sort of internal mechanics of how data is being integrated across the organization, all the underlying capabilities and ways that MDM is actually making the data better. Um, what this allows those users to do is to go to leverage Purview to find the data that they need. And in some cases, Purview might help them find that better data inside of Synapse, at which point they can go into tools like Power BI and then use it and consume it. Or in some cases, they may, able to, may find the data that they need within Prophecy, such as maybe some sort of reference data set. And again, they're able to go into the, the, the tools that they wish to use and then leverage that data within those tools um, to improve their decision making. So um, a, this really is a way for uh, to democratize the discovery, access, and ultimately the usage of information across the enterprise. So um, we'll go ahead and we're going to try to leave about uh, 10 minutes or so here at the end. Um, the last thing we want to cover off was just kind of the, the, the various deployment options and ways that customers um, have uh, for running Prophecy. So as Martin mentioned previously, um, about two and a half years ago, Prophecy um, released a version of our product that ran natively in containers. And what that means is that any of our customers could basically take the platform and those container images and then run Prophecy in their chosen cloud provider, which in, in the majority of the cases our customers are running uh, the Prophecy platform in Azure. Um, we, we, we then began an, uh, the process of taking those same container images and making Prophecy available as a, a true software as a service offering for our customers. Um, and, what, and, and this slide kind of uh, logically illustrates what that looks like. So we've created a number of different uh, uh, Prophecy uh, cloud regions across the world. And in those regions is deployed a multi-tenant infrastructure which we then stripe uh, customer tenants across that infrastructure. So um, this is a modern cloud you know, software as a service architecture. Um, it allows us to deliver this at a very uh, reasonable cost point for our customers. Um, our our uh, operations team is, is fully managing and monitoring, mo monitoring this for you, um, but it's still the exact same software under the covers, right? So whether you run our container yourself or running it for you, it's the exact same software, it's the exact same uh, container image which allows you to get all the same capabilities and eliminates the sort of catch 22s you often face, um, you know, with, you know, certain features being only available in one, one scenario or the other. 
Um, this allows us to, to, from a security perspective, which is something we've invested in heavily with this, allows us to isolate our, our customer tenants uh, from each other. So it's your database, it's your um, Kubernetes pod running here, uh, which means that it, it really eliminates uh, the, the risk of, of some sort of wires getting crossed and your data being exposed to anybody else. And so this has been defined to be secure and everything's deployed programmatically using um, a technology called Terraform, which is an infrastructure as code uh, technology. So um, that's the, the high levels of, of how we've delivered this. Uh, another key capability is we actually uh, uh, make the Prophecy uh, Cloud available with, a, with an out-of-the-box cross-region uh, kind of high availability and disaster recovery architecture. Um, so within a, our active uh, region, um, in this case, East US2, um, we have you know, uh, Kubernetes running across multiple availability zones. We're running our, our storage accounts and our SQL servers in a large elastic pool, um, all designed to be inherently highly available outside of out of the box. And in the event of some sort of uh, major outage in East US2, we're always replicating our customer solutions to an alternate Azure region. Um, and in the event of an outage, um, we're easily able to fail over our customers into that alternate Azure region, providing a built-in disaster recovery capability, um, which, is, which is something that, you know, to our knowledge, no other MVM vendor is providing any of their sort of cloud native offerings. Um, so this has really been architected not just to be secure, but also highly available as we have a, a growing number of customers uh, using Prophecy in very mission critical uh, applications. Um, as a part of that, I mentioned that um, security has been a, a major concern of ours. So not only did we architect our SaaS solution to be highly, highly secure, but we've also invested in, in a security program and all the various uh, kind of security audits that you would expect in order for our customers to feel comfortable um, trusting Prophecy with their sensitive data. Um, so we now have our SOC2 and HIPAA high tech certifications. Um, we're also uh, in the process of, of going through our um, our first ISO 27001 audit, um, which will begin here in the coming month. Um, we're continuing to invest in, 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 in additional enhancements to the underlying SaaS infrastructure for security, which you know, covers things like having a private SaaS off, uh, offering, um, which we are on the cusp of making available to our customers um, now that some capabilities within Azure uh, have been made available. So um, the solution is secure. It's highly available. If you want to see the details of security and how we we guarantee that our, you know, our our customers' data is treated with the with the uh, the concerns you would expect. Um, we have a page on our website that goes through all the various details of our security program um, in SaaS. So that's uh, that's all the kind of product related and and uh, the details around the intelligent data platform. I'll go ahead and hand it over to uh, Martin to wrap things up, and then we will um, we will go ahead and open it up for Q and A. Spectacular, Eric. That was. Uh... That was a, a bit of a fire hose. There was an awful lot in that, in a good way, a fire hose in a good way. Uh, you covered a huge amount of ground in a small amount of time. So um, if anyone uh, wants to uh, get the, uh, um, the the replay at some point and go back through it uh, line by line, you're also welcome, obviously welcome to do that. And uh, please drop any more questions in chat. I think a lot of them have been handled as we've gone through here, but uh, we have a bit of time to, to cover more. So I'll let, uh, I'll let Eric and uh, Srikanth kind of check those out while I cover this kind of this slide here as a, as a wrap up. So um, if you are uh, thinking about uh, the Microsoft Intelligent Data uh, Platform and how to implement that and make more high quality certified data available to the analysts who need to, to use it to either just gain insight on the business or uh, to drive forward the business based on, you know, to, to innovate and digitally transform the business, uh, then I think uh, it should be clear, it's certainly clear to us that uh, you need to have uh, a good platform of certified uh, quality data to, to, to do that, uh, which means you probably need MDM. We think you do need MDM. And if, if you buy the argument that you need MDM as part of that, as part of the underpinnings of having good data, then this slide here is, is intended to, to talk about why we think we are the best, but Prophecy is the best choice of MDM to, to fill that need. Um, if you're a Microsoft-centric uh, organization, and because you're here on this uh, webcast, I would guess that you are, a lot of our customers are, uh, then it would be important to you, I think, to know that we have the best integration with Azure um, uh, and lots of different components of Azure. We talked quite a lot here about Purview and the fact that Srikanth is here from the Purview team. Uh, and he, tell, he, he mentioned earlier that we have the most mature and longest uh, uh, running integration with Purview. Um, I, I think uh, speaks volumes. 
Uh, we're also integrated with Azure Data Factory. Eric showed some of that, where some of our uh, pipeline templates are now shipped with Azure Data Factory. Um, and the same thing with Power BI. We um, have a native connector, which we built, but is now shipped with uh, Power BI so that you can access uh, data from Power BI uh, directly. Uh, um, you can access master data directly from Power BI, which Eric also showed. Uh, and we can seamlessly publish information uh, into Synapse. Again, that was all covered in the architecture uh, uh, walkthrough. But we use ADF and uh, anything else that you'd want to use to, to um, join together the transactional and master data in Synapse, which is really should be the foundation for all of your uh, uh, reporting from an um, intelligent data platform perspective. We are uh, uh, generally, I think, viewed in the market as very easy to implement and use. Our customers certainly uh, uh, tell us a lot of times that that's why they, they chose us. Um, some things that make that uh, true are the fact that we have uh, a Kubernetes packaged uh, uh, service, or rather our solution is packaged as a Kubernetes service, and you can implement platform as a service or software as a service. Eric talked about that. Uh, and the software as a service you can have up and running in a few minutes um, to get you going very, very quickly. Then all you need to do is, is uh, upload your own artifacts into it and, and start using it. It's the same software, again, as Eric mentioned, whether you're doing platform as a service or software as a service, so you can actually you know, migrate from one to the other relatively simply if that's you, what you'd like to do. Um, we are one of the, the quickest uh, implementations in the industry. Gartner points out that we have a 90 more uh, uh, customers implementing in under 90 days than any other vendor. Um, in one of their MQs, they mentioned that. Um, and uh, I, I would only point out that some other vendors uh, take an awful lot longer than that. Uh, setting up the software uh, for us can be a few minutes, and then the rest is just how you configure it. So um, that is fast with us. Um, and it's an inherently multi-domain solution. Some other vendors and approaches kind of require you to start with one uh, um, kind of pre-packaged domain, and then it's kind of a, a big lift to move to the second or third or fourth. With us, uh, each domain that you would implement would get faster and faster, and there's no pricing or technical limitations in the software that would prevent you from uh, creating as many domains as you need to support your use case. Um, and uh, we're, uh, as I mentioned right at the very beginning, generally fairly well uh, liked by our customers. Uh, we're very proud of that, and we work very hard at it. Um, so we have the highest recommendations on Gartner Career Insights. And uh, with regards to our uh, integration into Microsoft, we have the most MDM deployments on Azure of any vendor and the most joint sales with Purview of any vendor. So um, hopefully that would be enough for, for you to uh, believe that we are uh, the best uh, um, way of implementing MDM within uh, intelligent data platform and uh, uh, alongside Purview. So uh, that was all I really wanted to, uh, uh, to cover. Um, Eric, could you just flip to the next slide and we'll, we'll leave it hanging on there while we uh, have the uh, Q&A. There you go. So um, some of this is uh, the same things that were published in the uh, the docs tab of, of the website, uh, the webcast software. Um, we do weekly demos uh, where we cover a lot of the same ground here, but we might see it presented in a slightly different way. So you can register for a weekly demo. Uh, we alternate weeks where we're just talking about prophecy and uh, weeks where we're talking about the Prophecy Purview integration. So feel free to go sign up for those. Um, you can go to prophecy.com slash MIDP. There's quite a, a, a few artifacts in there, some walkthroughs of the architectures that we just talked about and various other uh, ways that this has been presented in the past. So uh, there are some questions about that and some people asking for the reference architecture. So you can get that there. And then uh, if you go to docs.microsoft.com and search on Prophecy, uh, right now there's uh, three there's another uh, one of these just in the process of being published uh, documents. Uh, one uh, or a couple actually talking about how we are integrated with Purview, one that talking about how we integrate with Azure Data Factory, and the one that's just about to be published is um, how we can convert uh, uh, MDS, uh, Microsoft Master Data Services um, customers to uh, full featured MDM. So um, I'll let you uh, think about that. Eric, any questions that you want to handle um, uh, verbally? Uh, I think you've probably been busy uh, typing, but is there anything that you want to, to cover yeah. that's easier to talk about? Yeah, there's a couple here, I think. Um, so a couple of people have asked for permissions to, for some of these slides to support internal discussions. You know, I, I think happy to share, Re reach out to either uh, Martin or I, our, our, kind of, our email address is our first dot last at prophecy.com, so eric.melchitprophecy.com if you don't already have that. Um, there's a question around elaborating on the proxy integration with Synapse. So 
Um, today, Synapse has kind of the ability, has you know, a part of Synapse is, is ADF pipelines. Um, so our ADF integration um, is already sort of baked into Synapse via ADF. Um, however, we are, you know, we mentioned the Azure data or the, the Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform ecosystem. Um, everything that we showed today is really just, you know, where we are today on our sort of, you know, steps on a long-term path through that partnership. So um, we are, we, we will be working with the Synapse as well as the broader data platform teams, uh, database teams with Microsoft on additional integrations. Uh, same, same is true for Purview. There's a number of different uh, purview enhancements you know, between our you know, joint integration that are planned for the future. I saw someone asking around data quality rules. That is absolutely on our roadmap. Um, same is true for Azure Data Factory. So, um, so that is uh, so. So what you're seeing right now is a point in time, um, and there's far more to come. Um, looking through, there was, there was one question I wanted to ask you about. Uh, I ask you both, both Shukanth and Eric, about uh, Workday. Um, I wasn't clear if the question was about Workday as a source for uh, purview uh, being cataloged um, or whether it was as an input to Prophecy, but if you guys can just cover that off quickly. I'll, I'll cover Workday from the Prophecy perspective. I'll hand it to Shrikant for the, the, the uh, purview because I'm not 100% I'm not sure. Um, so for Workday, um, you know, I'll, we definitely have customers using Prophecy in conjunction with Workday. Um, you know, our, our integration strategy broadly, you can kind of see it with Azure Data Factory, um, is to make it easy for our customers to use their integration tools um, alongside Prophecy by providing open interfaces for doing doing so, whether those be uh, REST-based interfaces or or something more at the SQL Server database level. So, um, and then, uh, it, or, or something through more message-based architecture with like a, a MuleSoft or an Azure Event Hub, et cetera. So um, we definitely have customers using Prophecy with Workday. And typically, they're they're integrating Prophecy using kind of their existing standard integration tool that they're already using to move data in and out of Workday. And then, uh, sure, Camp, I don't know if you uh, have offhand whether or not Purview has a, a work, Workday uh, connectivity yet or not. Yeah, so um, you know, the, our goal is to go where the customer's data estate is. So whether it's in uh, databases or you know file shares or uh, even in the office side, you know, whether it's in SharePoint or other areas. Um, and definitely one of the big systems that we want to look at is uh, these business apps and, you know, without going to their backends. Uh, so we already have a Salesforce connector, for example. Uh, similarly, we'll have one for Workday that's being planned. Um, it's, um, it should show up, um, you know, eventually on our, our roadmap. But our goal is to not only uh, look at you know, just your traditional sources, but all of, all of these other business apps where you may have other layers uh, to harvest richer metadata to populate the data map, which can then be used by, you know, not only, you know, the existing services, but other new integrations that will come, uh, you know, laid up on top of the Purdue data map. Um, I think that the, the, it's a similar, uh, you know, answer to what uh, Eric mentioned, uh, is that you know, today, for example, uh, you know, Prophecy's primary point of integration is with the data map, so they're able to hydrate all of the stuff that uh, uh, is part of their pipeline. But uh, you know, in the future, what we're looking at is to uh, consume information from the data map in the third-party apps so they can do things like policy enforcement. So one of the things we are working on with Prophecy is to be able to take the access control and other kinds of policies we can express with the policy engine and then have that be pushed down to the Prophecy environments so you can get, for example, the same... Uh, you know, access control picture that's consistent with the raw sources. So your master data and your golden records can have the same, you know, if they have, there's some sensitivity with respect to certain fields in there, as an example, um, you know, you can enforce the policies consistently across both the master data as well as the raw sources. Yeah. So those are the yeah. kinds of things that you're looking at. Uh, yeah. So, and, yeah. You, you, so Utopia would be, you go into purview and say, this user can no longer see PII data. And then they log into Prophecy and there's no, they, they, all the PI data that we maybe ha have, you know, under management is no longer visible to that user. Would be an example of kind of a, a kind of that, you know, governance driving data management. Exactly. Um, for, um, we're almost out of time here. Uh, Srikanth, was there anything out of the Q&A that you wanted to just cover verbally for everyone's uh, benefit um, uh, or, or any other final words that you'd like to, uh, uh, to, to add in here? It was just one item here, there was some confusion about column level lineage. Uh, we do have column level lineage supported in a variety of sources. 
Um, and then there was also a question on entitlements. Um, so the entitlements will come through as, as you saw in the data map, it's on our roadmap. And we are looking more broadly. So for example, uh, we are working very closely with the M365 compliance teams as an example, and other parts of the security compliance sort of picture uh, from Microsoft side. So you'll see like a unified view of entitlements being brought in, uh, you know, both from you know the first party services as well as third party data sources. Uh, holistically, so that's that's how we are approaching this as as a, a platform for and a unified fabric for companies. Excellent. Um, there's a couple of questions just to show up in uh, chat, Eric, right at the the bottom. If yeah. you want to quickly cover them before we uh, we're we're about to run out of time, and I think the webcast will stop. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So uh, ArcGIS, we do have integrations with some mapping providers, uh, Google and Bing, Melissa and Locate being the three. Um, ArcGIS, I don't, I'm not aware of us. Well, we don't have a productized integration there. I would not be surprised if we have, there are, there are, there are interfaces where that could be done pretty easily. Um, I'd have to check and see if we have any customers that have already done that. Um, that's for Anna. Um, and then Michael, your question is probably easier. Michael Hauck, uh, your last question is around uh, integrations, probably longer than we have time for, but happy to follow up with you offline. Um, just skimming through real quick if there's any others that pop out. I think we've mostly covered them other than those last couple of things there that just showed up. So uh, we'll, we'll, um, we'll, we'll go through these uh, in detail, make sure that we didn't completely skip anything by mistake. Apologies if we did. Um, but uh, since we're at the top of the hour and uh, uh, everyone's probably in back-to-back -back calls, we, we will uh, call a, a halt here. And uh, thank you for your time. Um, if you are interested in any of this, you can go, you can contact us. Uh, Eric already told you you can contact URI directly um, or contact us through uh, uh, the Prophecy homepage. Um, and uh, we would look forward to speaking to you. Thank you very much. Thanks, awesome. Eric. And thanks, Rikanth, for supporting Thank the you. presentation. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.